Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're sitting comfortably, book out, ready to take notes. Our topic today is increasing and decreasing by percentage. I'm going to show you two ways to do this to start with. Long way, short way. Okay, take this example. I'm 175, I want to grow by 12%. How tall will I be? Well, the long way is we would find 12% of 175. And to do that, we convert that 12 percentage into a decimal, which we do by dividing by 100. And you wouldn't, you can do that in your head pretty comfortably. Just drop the decimal place two back. All right, so once we've got this 12, 12% 12 of 175 of, in maths, almost always means times. So 175, 12% of that is 21 centimeters. If I want to grow by 12%, and now we know that 12% of 175 is 21, we take the 175 and add on that 21, and the new result is that height there in centimeters. Easy enough. All right. Let's think about decreasing. Let's say I'm 105 and want to shrink by 20%. First step is we take that 20 and we convert it into a decimal. 0.2. Easy enough. Then we find out what 20% of 105 is. So we do that 0.2 times the 105. And coincidentally enough, it's 21 again. Then if we want to decrease it by 21 by 20%, which is 21 kilos, we do the 105, take 21, and our result is 84 kilos. All right, that's the long way. The short way is by what's called using a multiplier. And the multiplier for increasing is one plus R and one take R is for decreasing. R is whatever that decimal was. So it's the percentage by which we're going up or down expressed as a decimal. So in our case here, the multiplier is 1, 1 plus 0.12. Easy enough. And that is 1.12. So it's very simple in terms of increasing something is that you find this multiplier and then do exactly what the name suggests, is you multiply by it. Ooh. 1.12. And we've ended up at exactly the same spot as before. Pretty good. Pretty neat. Now, multiplying for decreasing, instead of adding on the R, you take it off. So we have 1 take 0.8. 0.2, I was jumping to the answer, and that gets us 0.8. So we use that as the multiplier and take 105, multiply by 0.8, and the result is the 84, exactly the same as it was there. All right. So two ways to do it, both are completely valid, but the multiplier is quite a neat result that we use later on when it comes to compound interest. So it's worth knowing that way as well. All right. Ooh, I've got the answer there for you. So I'd like to, I guess, dispel a fallacy that plenty of students have in that if you increase something by 45% and then decrease it by 45%, you end up back at the same place. Plenty of people think if you take a dollar, add 50% on, take 50% off, you get back at the same spot. But I want to show you why that's not true. So to increase 1400 by 45 using 45% in the multiplier is that easy. That's it increased by 45%. And then we take the answer. So if this is the answer, that 230, 2030 rather, we decrease that by 45%, meaning we're taking 2030, multiplying it by 0.55, which is this. And we're ending up back lower than we did originally. And the reason that's happening is because when we increased, we increased by 45% of the 1400. So we're taking 45% of 1400 and going up. But here, we're taking 45% not of 1,400, we're taking 45% of 2,030 and going down. And clearly, 45% of 2,030 is bigger than 45% of 1,400. So we end up back below that original 1,400 mark. All right, one more skill. I'd like to show you something called percentage error. And this is an excellent thing that for you to include in your answers. And they might not always ask for it, but it's nice to show a percentage error or percentage difference. So if you want to say how far out someone's calculation was, you could say it's, say, three centimeters out. 
but that doesn't give you a huge, um, sorry, a huge idea of how right or wrong they are. If I was measuring the distance from here to Snell's Beach and I was three centimeters out, I've done a pretty good job. If I was measuring the length of my little finger and I'm out by three centimeters, I've done an awful job. So it's much more common to talk about percentage error, as in how far off they were relative to what they were measuring. So a percent error. And the way that calculation works is, well, the example is, you know, who knows their exact height. Let's say I guess my height was 180 centimetres. And then I stand up against a measuring board, and it turns out I'm actually 184. All right, so this would be the guess. I can type it under. And the actual. Now, clearly there's an error of four centimeters. So the way we calculate percentage error is we do the error divided by the actual answer times 100. So my percentage out is 2.179%. So not bad. So that's an important formula that's probably worth having with you because it's really useful in terms of showing off an extra little bit of knowledge in that you can quantify how big a mistake someone made and it's always relative to what their actual measurement was. All right, thank you very much for asking. That's it, please bring those notes to class and be ready to get some work done.